In our last video, we took a look at our determinants of market structure. We then took those determinants of market structure and brought a lot of them forward to say, okay, what are our assumptions of this perfectly competitive market? And then we took a look at those and what they mean and that, hey, the competitive firms would be price takers. And then if they're a price taker, well, what does this mean for our average revenue, our marginal revenue, our price? We went through a whole bunch of math to show, hey, ultimately, price, average revenue, marginal revenue, one and the same. It just seemed like everything was a whole bunch of hand waving. What we're doing moving on is we're going to take all that algebra, all that kind of assumption and theory, and we're going to bring it forward. And we're going to take a look at what that actually means for our firms, how we maximize profit, and how we find that ideal, that optimal level of output, that Q star, as it were. So let's move on and take a look at that. Best way to see this without having too much hand waving going on. Let's take a look at a bit of a table. Let's suppose that I had um, price, and we'll just suppose that for simplicity, this price is $2, and right, like we said for perfect competition, it's fixed. Let's suppose that our quantity, let's suppose that our quantity produced is just going up as such, one, two, three, four, and five. So, okay, if we were to work through that, our total revenue, well, our total revenue is what? Two. Total revenue for the next one, price of two times quantity of two, four, six, eight, and 10. So, okay, we see how our total revenue is going up. Very similarly, working out average revenue. So total revenue divided by quantity. Hey, what does that give us? Two, two, right? Keeping in mind, average revenue equals price. We already worked that out on that previous page. Final one, marginal revenue. So we have a change in quantity. Well, how does that change my total revenue? So, okay, I had a change in quantity of plus one. That gave me a change in total revenue of plus two. 2 divided by 1 gave me 2, right? And again, we worked out on that previous page that marginal revenue equals price. So we have all this the same. Cool. Okay, where's all this going? Let's go and draw just a little break here. Let's just scooch over a little bit to give us some room. And over here, we will have our costs. So for our costs, what we're going to be taking a look at is we'll take a look at our total costs. We'll also take a look at the average total cost, our marginal cost, and then, hey, because we have our total revenue, because we have our total cost, might as well also take a look at our profit of this firm and see if we can figure out, given the information we have, where our profit maximizing point is, and keeping in mind that ultimately, the only thing this firm got to choose was how many apples to produce. Everything else, price was fixed. So choice of Q gave us our choice of total revenue. Choice of Q gave us our choice of labor. That labor then influenced our total cost and our marginal cost. So our only choice then was output. And so we will identify our optimal level of output in this as well. So for our total cost, let's presume that it goes up something like this. So we start off at one, we then jump up to two. Ah, from two, let's presume we're going to four, to seven, and then our final, we're gonna cost total cost of 11 to produce our five units. What does that give us for our average total cost? Well, for our average total cost here, we are going to have uh, initially one unit, right? So average total cost, total cost per unit. What is that gonna give us? Uh, total cost per unit, one divided by one gives me one. Uh, second point here, two divided by two, well, that's gonna give me again, one. Four divided by three, that's gonna be 1.33. And then seven over four, that'll be 1.75. 
Carrying on, last one. Total cost per unit, 11 divided by five. That will give me 2.2. So, okay, we see our total cost. Well, likely what this means, we started at our minimum and then we began to creep upwards. So, okay, that's where we are at for our average total cost. What about our marginal cost? So, okay, keep in mind how we are calculating our average cost, or sorry, our marginal cost. Marginal cost is, let's just write this here, the change in total cost for a change in units produced. So, what did we have going on here? Change in total cost, this was plus one. Let's just write all of these guys here. Plus two. Uh, four to seven, that was plus three, and then seven to 11, that was plus four. So what we see is we see that our marginal cost is increasing. This is in lines with what we saw with our cost curves before. And to work out our marginal cost is, well, okay, we're gonna compare this, that there is a change of plus one. We have a change of plus one. Okay, this side's going to be pretty simple. This is always plus one, plus one, plus one. So working this out, what do we have for our marginal costs? As we go from one to two units, that second unit produced, right? One to two units. That second unit produced is going to have an average, or sorry, a marginal cost of one over one. One over one gives me a marginal cost of one. Here, as I go from uh, two to three units, well, my total cost increases by two for that plus one. So two over one gives me two. All right, keep in mind, I don't have anything for the first guy. And then carrying on, so marginal cost of one, marginal cost of two, three over one, and then four over one. I have my increasing marginal costs as I go through there. Okay, so that's our marginal cost. Let's finally finish off by taking a look at our profit. Profit is just total revenue minus total cost. So what do we have? We have two minus one gives me a profit of one. Four minus two gives me a profit of two. Six minus four gives me a profit of two. Eight minus seven gives me a profit of one. And then finally, 10 minus 11 gives me a profit of negative one. So, okay, I have how my profit's changing here. What we should notice is that, hey, I have the highest possible profit here at these two points. What is that attached to? That's attached to a quantity of two versus three units. So, okay, if we take a look at that, once we hit two units, we have a profit of two. And okay, we're happy with that, but I'm technically indifferent, right? I'm making just as much profit at two units as I am at three. So I will typically say we carry on to this point here, because why not? I'm not any worse off by doing so. And so we'd say that, hey, in this case here, our profit maximizing level of output is Q star. So, wow, that was a lot of work to find this. It would be nice if there was some kind of cheat that we could use to work through this. And truthfully, there is. There is. We can go and take a look at this and we can say, okay, here's my marginal revenue, two all the way through. If we take a look at our line here at number three, all the way across, all the way across, let's take a look at this row. What do we have? We had our, all right, let's just throw in these numbers just so we can look at them, two and two. At this point where our profit was maximized, we had a marginal revenue, so the extra money earned from this extra unit of two versus an extra cost of two. That is, we had our profit maximizing point of Q star, the highest possible profit we could have earned, this optimal level of production, 
This occurred at the point where our marginal revenue was one and the same as our marginal cost. The extra revenue earned was identical to the extra cost of that extra unit. And this here is our profit maximizing condition. Profit maximizing condition where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. And this is the big thing we're getting at, right? Firms exist. Their fund, our fundamental assumption for firm behavior is that they are in business to maximize profit and they do so in the margin. And that marginal profit maximization, when the extra revenue received for an extra unit is equal to the extra cost um, that you would occur for producing that extra unit. Right, and if we just think about these marginals for a second to kind of think about why that's the case. Okay, we see all of this going on here. Let's just uh, go down. And we can think about it in terms of, instead of all these total averages and all that, let's just think about it a little bit simpler. Let's define marginal profit as the change in profit or change in output. So, okay, if this value is positive, my profit's increasing. If this value is negative, my profit's going down. We've already defined marginal revenue as the change in total revenue or a change in output. And we've already defined marginal cost as the change in total cost over the change in output. If our profit function is total revenue minus total cost, we could go through a whole bunch of algebra and I'm not gonna go through about actually doing the proof for this. But what we can ultimately end up with is we can end up at a point such that the marginal profit is equal to the, sorry, uh, back up here. What we can get to is we can get to a point, what we can get to is we can get to a point such that the marginal profit is equal to my marginal revenue minus my marginal cost and what we can witness with this if we kind of go like this go like that and go like that we can take a look at a scenario where okay let's presume our marginal revenue is fixed right we already took a look at this marginal revenue is fixed at well, let's pick a let's pick a new number let's say our marginal revenue is fixed at a price of four so four all the way through our marginal cost, however, let's say our marginal cost is going up as such, two, three, four, five, and let's just do one more, six. How does this influence my marginal profit? Well, hey, if marginal profit is marginal revenue minus marginal cost, right? Keep in mind marginal profit, how much extra profit do I receive for an extra unit produced? Well, okay, I decided to go plus one quantity. So I'm facing a marginal revenue of four versus a marginal cost of two. I'm getting a marginal profit of plus two. Woo, I just made an extra $2 from this extra unit produced. As I say, that's pretty good. Let's go and produce more. So I increase my quantity by another plus one. Well, I face again a marginal revenue of four, but now a marginal cost of three. So, okay, I'm now facing a marginal profit of one, but keep in mind, this is the change in profit. So my profit's still growing, right? It increased by another plus one. So, woo, I'm excited again. My profit's getting bigger. So we increase quantity again. As we increase quantity again, we're now here, right? This is four, marginal cost of four. Oh, I have a marginal profit of zero. That is, my profit didn't get bigger, but it didn't shrink either. I'm kind of indifferent between these two points, right? I'm no worse off, but I'm no better off either. So, okay, should be happy here. But let's say, let's say we decided to keep going. We did another plus one quantity. Well, now, still marginal revenue of four versus a marginal cost of five. 
4 minus 5 gives me negative 1. Keep in mind, right, maybe that's tough to see. This is a positive. This is a positive, right? Profit was increasing up here. Now I have a change in profit of minus 1, meaning now my profit's actually shrinking. That is, my costs are growing faster than my revenues. If my costs are increasing faster than my revenues, that's, that's bad for business. My profit is beginning to fall. One more case, four to six, negative two, right? My profit is again beginning to fall. So what we witness in this is that we have this profit maximizing point, the place where I'm making the most money that I possibly could. And that's occurring right there where my marginal profit is zero. And that point where my marginal profit is zero, my marginal revenue equals my marginal cost. And I have my profit maximizing condition. Again, to write that down, my optimal level of output, the only thing I got to choose was Q. And that optimal level of output was where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Uh, sorry, Q star at. All right, we'll use the little computer symbol there. Q star at the point where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Let's bring all this over to our cost curves then and let's see how it works out in that sense. Okay, so we have this whole identity now that for a firm to profit maximize, they choose some value of Q star, uh, I'm going to abbreviate, such that our marginal revenue equals marginal cost. What we want to do is we want to draw this forward now into our cost diagram and see where this gives us our optimal level of quantity produced. And then based off of that, figure out, okay, is a firm earning positive, zero, negative profit? And then we'll take a look at some ramifications of that. So let's start off. Let's draw our axes here. We have our vertical axes, which is our dollars per unit. We'll often also see this as the price, right? And if you think about it, right, if you think about uh, our prices, we do measure our prices in terms of dollars per unit. Price of a coffee, well, that is $2 per cup. Right, so price or dollars per unit, we'll see that for our vertical axis. For our horizontal axes, we have quantity. What we then have going through our curves, we have first our average variable cost, right? Keeping in mind that average variable cost is U-shaped. We have our average total cost starting off more distant, dropping down, hitting a minimum, and then getting closer as we rise up. Again, keep in mind why it has this shape. Our vertical distance between these two lines, that is our average fixed cost. What we then have is we have our marginal cost, which dips, comes up through our minimum average variable cost, carries on up through our minimum average total cost, and then carries on upwards. So we have our marginal cost curve looking as such, and we have our cost diagram. So in this case here, let's show what happens when we actually know some market price and what color do I want to use for market price? What do I use? Let's use yellow for market price. There we go. So market Price will be yellow. And keep in mind what we said for this is that price equals average revenue equals marginal revenue. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw in a market price and we'll work through what exactly this will yield for our diagram. And then we'll back up and we'll go the other way and we'll say, hey, say I wanted to demonstrate a firm earning positive profit. Where would I put this price such that that's the case? Or if negative profit, where would I put it? Zero profit, where would I put it? So, okay, keep in mind one of the big things for our firm is because it's a tiny firm, it's a price taker, and irrespective of how much quantity they produce, 
they don't get to influence the market. If they went bankrupt and they produced zero, the market wouldn't notice. If they produced the most they could possibly produce, the market wouldn't notice. For every unit, every no matter how many units they are, whatever possible number of units this firm could produce, it's going to be one fixed price, which is strictly dictated by the market. So let's put that price as this, just strictly a horizontal line such that price equals average revenue equals marginal revenue. So we have our price line, right? Just dictated from the market. And I could go here, I could go price. Okay, what we want to identify from this then is our value of Q star. And how do we determine this value of Q star? Well, keep in mind that this Q star, this profit maximizing level of output is going to be determined such that our marginal revenue equals our marginal cost. So where does that occur? Where does marginal revenue equal marginal cost? Well, we have marginal revenue. We have marginal cost. So we're looking where this yellow line intersects the red line. We'll notice that that occurs right there. If we were then to take that point and draw a line straight down, so let's just use a bit of a thinner line to demonstrate this. Boom, eh, not so bad. Vertical line straight down at that point, we would have our value of Q star. That would be our profit maximizing quantity produced such that we have marginal revenue and marginal cost one and the same value right at that point. Okay, so that's our profit maximizing quantity, profit maximizing level of output. The follow-up question then is going to be, well, okay, at this, at this point, are we earning positive profit? Are we earning negative profit? Where are we at? What's, what's going on with this? And so let's, let's take a look at this. Let's draw over a few more lines. Let's take a look. We have... Let's update this. This point here, this is price equals um, price equals marginal revenue, which then equals to marginal cost. Right at that point there, we have our marginal cost point. We also have our marginal revenue point. Carrying down, next one, right here. That's not the tool I want. Let's make that a nice straight line. Right here, we have our average total cost. And then carrying it one more farther down, what do we have? Right where that white line intersects the green line, I'm going to have my value for our average variable cost. So now the question comes, well, okay, what are we earning as profit? Is it positive? Is it negative? Do we know what this value is? So let's, let's think about this. I'm just going to slide this whole thing over to our left, and we can talk about our whole profit equation. So what do we have? We have profit equals total revenue minus total cost. And okay, cool, except... Our entire cost diagram on the left there is all in terms of average costs, average revenues, marginal costs, marginal revenues. We don't have totals appearing anywhere. But okay, keep in mind what we can do is we can turn all of this into a profit per unit, total revenue per unit, total cost per unit. Wait, wait, wait. Profit per unit? Total revenue per unit? Total cost per unit? Wait a minute, that there, that is my average revenue. That there, that's my average total cost. And what about this last one here? Well, that there would be my profit per unit. I could call that my average profit. So that is my average profit or my profit per unit is just going to be my average revenue minus my average total cost. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What was my average revenue? My average revenue is just my price. So price minus average total cost is gonna be my average profit. 
And if we wanted to think about it, right? Okay, this is profit per unit. Truthfully, this is profit per unit at Q star. Total revenue per unit at Q star. Total cost per unit at Q star. So that is, if I bring this guy back, update this, I could go, okay, profit per unit at Q star equals price minus average total cost. That will give me my profit per unit. Or I could get profit by itself. I could times both sides by Q star. And I could get profit is price minus average total cost times Q star. And that would give me my actual value of profit. Now, okay, we could work through this, right? Really the big ones that we'd want to consider are these bottom two, our profit and our profit per unit. Most of the time, probably about 90% of the time, all we're going to be interested in is, hey, is our profit positive? Is it negative or is it zero? Right? And, you know, hopefully that's pretty clear how we could work that out. We could go if price is bigger than average total cost, then we're going to have positive profit. If price equals average total cost, we're going to have zero profit. And if price is less than our average total cost, we'll have negative profit. Right, hopefully that's pretty clear. You can kind of visualize that given this equation here. We're going to get positive, negative, or zero, depending on the relationship between price and average total cost. Price per unit, total cost per unit. So in this case, if we go back up to our diagram and look at what's happening here, well, what do we have? We have a price way up here. We have an average total cost here. If we go price minus average total cost, I get this vertical distance there that I've just kind of highlighted. That would be my average profit or my profit per unit. But I'm then making, I'm then making Q star units. So right, if we just think about this as some simple geometry, base times height is the area of our rectangle or square. Well, what do I have for this uh, rectangle or square? I have base right along there, height here. I'm going to have this little rectangle going on here between the yellow line and the blue line. Right, all of this will be my profit. I could recognize, I could identify my profit as this rectangle. And in this case here, we would say that all of this, this is positive profit. And again, keep in mind, this is positive economic profit. Positive economic profit, because this would be including our implicit costs, our opportunity costs of production. So, okay, what did we do in this whole process? Let's remind ourselves. We drew our cost curves. These cost curves are the same no matter what. In this case, I just drew down a price curve such that it was quite high. What I looked for was I looked for the point where marginal revenue equaled marginal cost, which occurred right there. From that point, I drew a straight line down and I labeled that Q star as my profit maximizing level of output. And then I just went and said, okay, at this Q star, well, okay, at this Q star, what is my average variable cost? Drew that across. What is my average total cost? Drew that across. And then what is my marginal cost, marginal revenue, or my price? And I drew that across. From there, I can just look at it and say, okay, is my price bigger than my average total cost? That is, price is marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So is marginal revenue, marginal cost, bigger than my average total cost? If yes, positive profit, because price is bigger than average total cost. If this value was at my average total cost, I'd have zero profit. And if I had some price, marginal revenue, marginal cost, below my average total cost, I would have negative 
profit. From here, we could also then identify, right, a lot of our key terms that we'd looked at before, right? Keeping in mind when we labeled these, what did we have? We had this point right here, our minimum point on our average total cost curve. We called that the capacity of the firm. So we would say, okay, at Q star, we are operating above capacity, right? Because we're operating at some level of output higher than what my Q capacity would be. All right, I could name that Q cap for Q capacity. I'm operating above capacity. What other points do I have? Well, I have this point of interest here. Uh, let's use let's use a nice straight line for that. This point of interest right here, such that this point onwards, remember what this guy was? This point onwards, I was experiencing diminishing average returns. So I could say, okay, at my profit maximizing level of output Q star right now, I will be experiencing diminishing average returns while operating above capacity. What's the final point I could look at? Well, the final point I could look at is this minimum marginal cost. And keep in mind what's happening there with that minimum marginal cost. That point there, from there onwards, I was experiencing diminishing marginal returns. So we find that at my profit maximizing level of output here, we are earning, given the way we've drawn this, right? Earning positive profit. We are operating above capacity. And we are experiencing diminishing average returns and diminishing marginal returns. So we can identify all of that based off of our identification of Q star. Okay, let's take a look at one more. And uh, we'll do two more actually. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at two more different circumstances. Zero profit and negative profit. So we've taken a look at a firm earning positive profit. In this case, we want to switch it up. We want to take a look at a firm. So again, firm in a perfectly competitive market structure. And in this case, we want to take a look at the zero profit. So let's keep in mind again what this is. Uh, we're going to find our profit maximizing. The only thing the firm gets to choose, we took a look at this several times, the only thing the firm gets to choose is their level of output, Q. Everything else, everything else in the firm's profit function is a, well, really just a result of their choice of output. The only other thing that you get to choose is labor, but again, they're going to choose their level of labor based on their level of output that they want to produce. So everything comes back to Q. Thus, we will have some profit maximizing level of output. We'll call it Q star. And then we'll find Q star at the point where our marginal revenue equals our marginal cost. And we took a look at the whole thing as to why that's the case, why this is profit maximizing. That being said, okay, marginal revenue. We said for a perfectly competitive firm, we can say that price equals average revenue equals marginal revenue and that all this was equal to marginal cost. So, okay, we have all of that equal to marginal cost at our Q star point. And so typically what we did is if we wanted to identify Q star, we just looked for the intersection between marginal revenue and marginal And that's what we did last time. In this time though, I wanna kind of attack it from the other side. And I wanna say, okay, we have our diagram. I want this diagram such that this price line is being drawn for a point where profit is. So we have to do a little bit more advanced thinking on it. We do a little bit of uh, mental gymnastics to figure that out. And the way that we're going to do that is let's kind of just think about what our profit is. With respect to our cost diagram, right, we went through the, algebra, uh, the algebraic voodoo for this. We said that profit was price minus average total cost and then times our level of output, which was our profit maximizing level of output, Q star. So if I want profit to be equal to zero, what am I, what am I doing? Well, you're like, well, okay, Keith, you could just set Q star equal to zero. 
yeah, yeah, I could, but that's not very likely to be actually a profit maximizing level of QSTAR. What we're looking at is we were identifying QSTAR from that intersection, keeping in mind marginal revenue is price. So I want the point where price equals average total cost. Right? When those guys are equal, we will have zero and we'll have zero economic profit. So that's what we're looking for in this case here. So, okay, that being said, price equals average total cost. Price, well, what is price equal to? We can go price equals average revenue equals marginal revenue. We want all of that equal to marginal cost first to get Q star. So price equals marginal cost. And then we want all of this also equal to average total cost. So we need all of this to be equal on our diagram in order to have zero profit. And it seems like, oh, wow, that's, that's a lot of stuff we're trying to work out. Well, let's just break it down one by one, right? We can identify, hey, there's the point where marginal cost equals average total cost. Where do those two lines cross? And hopefully you can recall that, that marginal cost crosses our average total, crosses our average variable cost curve at their minimum point, right? Marginal cost came up to the minimum point of each of these average cost curves. So that is, we're going to want a price that equals those guys at the minimum point of our average total cost. Now, okay, without the diagram, you might be like, whoa, what's happening here? What's going on? So let's, let, let's visualize this. Let's take a look at it here. Let's draw our axes. I have our vertical axes. I have our horizontal axes. Vertical axes, these are dollars per unit or price. And our horizontal axis is output quantity. What we're going to be taking a look at right first, drawing our cost curves, I like to start with my average variable cost. Goes down, hits a minimum, rises up. Then I move on over to the average total cost curve, starting off with a good gap between them, dropping down, hitting a minimum, rising up, getting closer to the average variable cost curve, but never touching it. Average total cost. Finally, then, what we're going to have is we're going to have our marginal cost curve dipping down, coming up through the minimum average variable cost, coming up minimum average total cost, and then rising on upwards. That's our marginal cost. And again, intersection at minimum average variable, intersection at minimum average total, or at least in our case, the best we can do while freehanding. And now we have our cost curves. We can go and we can try to identify a point such that we have a price dictated to us, such that at this price we are earning zero economic. So let's see if we can find this price. Let's see where this is. This price here, keep in mind what we're looking for. We're looking for price equals marginal cost equals average total cost. So where's that gonna occur? That will occur. I drew that a little bit high. Let's try that again. That will occur right there. Draw that line the other way. What do I have here? Well, at this point, I'm going to have price equals average revenue equals marginal revenue. So, okay, have my price line. If we then identify this, marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Where does that occur? Well, marginal revenue equals marginal cost right there. So, Draw that line down and we can identify our point of Q star, our profit maximizing, our optimal level of output. And then if we start to identify what the corresponding costs are at Q star, well, we have right there, that guy there, that's our average variable cost. Carrying on upwards, well, we already have this yellow line, that's our price. We have it there as well though, oh, wrong tool. We have right there as well. Same point, just drawing a little bit above just to differentiate so we can see the line. Same point there, we're gonna have our average total cost. So okay, keep in mind, what have we done? We've identified Q star where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Okay, marginal revenue equals marginal cost right at that point there, that's where they cross. So they also equal average total cost. Identified Q star. Once we identified Q star, we went back up 
our vertical line and identified the points where it crossed all of our lines of interest. So we said, okay, here's our average variable cost. Keep going up. Okay, here's our average total cost. Hey, at this point, price equals average total cost. Price equals average total cost. Well, that means, hey, price equals average total cost. That average profit is zero. If average profit is zero, my total profit is zero. So here we have a perfectly competitive firm earning zero economic profit. Follow up on this. Hey, where is this firm producing with respect to the capacity of the firm? Is this firm experiencing diminishing average returns? Is this firm experiencing diminishing marginal returns? These are all questions we could ask to follow up and all questions we could answer given our current given our current diagram. So let's let's take a look at these. First one, let's identify the capacity of the firm. Keep in mind, capacity of the firm was a minimum average total cost, our cheapest per unit cost. And so that gave us the capacity of our firm right there. Meaning, okay, where are we with respect to capacity? If we're earning zero economic profit in a perfectly competitive marketplace, we are operating at the firm's capacity. We are at capacity. What's our next point that we're considering here? Our next point that we can consider is we can go to the minimum average variable cost curve we can draw that line down we can draw that across and what was happening here this was our point where we began to experience diminishing average returns so diminishing average returns at this point that is at our q star we are in that diminishing average return zone so yeah yeah we're experiencing diminishing average returns Last one, are we experiencing diminishing average returns? Well, diminishing average returns, minimum marginal cost down. So let's uh, make some room so we can actually see that there. And then from minimum marginal cost down, we drag it across. Dragging that across, we then have our finishing marginal returns. And so diminishing marginal returns, yes. Diminishing average returns, yes. And where are we with respect to capacity? We are at the firm. So we have all of our points of interest there. Next, let's move on to a little bit more of a complicated case. Uh, let's go take a look at our negative profit. But attached to negative profit is going to be an interesting kind of aside, which is going to be our shutdown condition. So let's take a look at our negative profit and our shutdown next. Okay, in this case here, what we're going to be taking a look at is we're going to be taking a look at the case of negative profit. So okay, again, if we think about our profit equation here, profit is price minus average total cost times our Q star. If we're looking for a point of negative profit, what does that mean? That means in order to get this whole profit thing to be negative, we need a price such that price is less than average total cost. But if the price is less than average total cost, that is if we're actually earning this negative profit, the question kind of becomes, what should we do? Should we, right, we have two options here. Should we produce or should we shut down? What's going to be the best kind of scenario for the business to do in order to maximize their profit? Keeping in mind, we're talking about negative profit. It seems kind of weird about maximizing your negative profit. Think about it this way. Would you rather occur, you're in a situation, you're either going to lose 20 or you're going to lose 5. All right? Which one would you rather lose? Either way, you have to lose something. Which one do you pick? Well, hopefully you realize that's going to be better to lose $5 over losing 20 bucks. And so what you're doing in this case here is you're maximizing your profit or you're minimizing your loss. Same kind of idea, just being thought of from the different perspective. And that's what we're doing with profit maximization for negative profit. We are minimizing this. So let's, let's talk about the shutdown situation again. Let's say we are looking at a shutdown scenario or produce scenario and we have some kind of case where uh, let's just take a look at the price and that price is going to be fixed at uh, let's say five dollars so our price is fixed at five dollars and then what we have is we have our i don't even really need that line don't know why i drew it 
our price is going to be fixed at $5. And then let's say that we're going to have an average fixed cost of 4 and an average variable cost of, uh, let's say our average variable cost is 2. And we need to figure out, okay, at this point here, is it worth even producing? That is, we could either have a, let's say that the corresponding Q star, marginal revenue equals marginal cost at this point. Let's say the corresponding Q star was 10. And my question is, okay, should I do Q star of 10? Or what I'll call Q star shutdown of zero. And I want to compare and contrast these two options here and work out, okay, what should I do? Let's just keep in mind this Q star, this was such that marginal revenue equals marginal cost. I don't have my marginal revenue curve in here. I don't have my marginal cost curve in here. A little bit of a challenge question. You can think about this, see if you can get it. What would be the value of my marginal cost when Q star equals 10? You actually have the answer with the numbers provided. We will take a look at this later on as to how we find that, but a uh, bit of a challenge. You gotta think really about what is happening at this equal point. Work out, hey, what is my value of marginal cost? Again, just a bit of a challenge right now. See if you can work that out. Uh, if not, let's carry on with this. So let's take a look at our profit. So we have profit underneath two scenarios. First profit is we're actually producing at Q star. So profit at the Q star, we have a price of five. We have an average total cost. Oh, do we have an average total cost? It doesn't look like we do, but no, 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 we, we, we do. Average total cost is average fixed plus average variable. So four plus two gives me an average total cost of six and then times a Q star of 10. So times a Q star of 10. Working that through then, what do I have? Well, profit is gonna be five minus six is negative one, negative one times 10 is, I'm gonna have profit of negative 10. So, okay, it looks like I'm losing some money. What about over on this side here? Well, if I produce zero, I'm not gonna have any Q star, and you're like, well, okay, hey, look, I throw in a Q star of zero into this guy, I get zero, clearly that's better. Well, no, 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 if we throw Q star to zero, this is not a marginal revenue equals marginal cost Q star. We can't use this version of our, of our cost curves in order to figure so, okay, that's, that's not going to really. So what we'd have to work out then is we would have to work out our profit as our total revenue minus our total cost and go through it in this way. So, okay, if we think about this, profit is total revenue. Well, price is five, but you shut down is zero. So my total revenue is zero minus my total cost. Well, that's going to be total fixed cost plus total variable cost. Well, if I'm producing nothing, I don't need any workers. So my output is zero, my total variable cost is zero. So that's just gonna be zero. Meaning all I'm gonna have, my profit is just gonna be equal to my negative total fixed cost. Now can we figure out what this total fixed cost is? You're like, ooh, can we? Yeah, 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 we can. Total fixed cost. Well, average fixed cost, right? Average fixed cost equals total fixed cost over Q. So, okay, four was our average, 10 was our Q. So, okay, we work that out. Q times my average fixed cost equals my total fixed cost. What do we get? Four times 10 is 40. So, in this case here, my profit is going to be negative. 40. Okay, let's do a bit of compare and contrast. If I shut down, if I close my doors, if I produce nothing, Qs of zero, my profit is going to be negative 40. My economic losses are negative 40. If I produce at a loss though, well, my losses are only negative 10. Which, which one's preferred in this case? Negative 10, right? Hopefully that was pretty clear. You'd rather lose $10 than $40. So we have our 
we have our case here that, okay, given our scenario happening, what we want to do is we want to continue to produce despite earning our negative profit, despite earning losses. What about the other scenario? Let's, uh, let's take a look. How do we get the shutdown case? Well, let's just scroll down. Let's take a look at a bit of an updated situation to work out our shutdown. So let's say we have again price of five. In this case here, I'm going to say that I have an average fixed cost of, uh, let's say the average fixed cost is lower. Let's say the average fixed cost is only one, but my average variable cost equals six. So much larger labor cost, much lower fixed cost in this case here. We're going to go through again. We'll say that our Q star, again, this is where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. We'll say our Q star is again 10, just for simplicity. Or our other option is to shut down and we'll produce zero. Again, this shutdown Q star is not you can write this, marginal revenue, marginal cost, not equal. This is not where marginal revenue equals marginal. This is just our other option that's going on there. So, okay, if we work at our profit in this case, profit if we operate. So if we operate, price minus average total cost times Q star. So what do we have? Uh, we have a price of five. We have an average total cost, average fixed cost of one, average variable cost of six, so seven times ten. So five minus seven, that's negative two. Negative two times ten, that looks like eleven. There we go. Negative two times ten. Profit would have been negative twenty. So okay, that's our first one we want to consider. If I operate, I'm going to lose twenty dollars. What if I just shut down? What do I lose if I shut down? Well, let's take a look at that. Keep in mind for this case here, we have to use our actual full profit equation. It all collapses just like it did in the previous case. If we're producing zero, we have no revenue. If we're producing zero, I have no labor cost. So just like I did above, our profit breaks down just to be our negative total fixed cost. Average fixed cost is one, output is 10. So just like we did above, Q times average fixed cost equals total fixed cost. So one times 10, I have negative 10. In this case, what should I choose? Should I continue to operate or should I just shut my doors and close down? Okay, in this case here, hopefully this is clear. I'd rather lose $10 than $20. So in this case, I would shut down. Okay, so we have two, two scenarios. In one scenario, it was loss minimizing or profit maximizing to stay open. Right up here, we had negative 10 or negative 40. We said, no, 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 we'll take our negative 10. Down here, we had negative 20 or negative 10, and we said, no, 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 shutting down, earning negative 10 is a much better case. We're going to do that. What, what was our differentiating factor in this case? Well, our differentiating factor in this case was entirely to do with the relationship between our average variable cost and the price. Or to think about it another way, our total variable cost and total revenue, right? And the reason why this is the case, if we kind of think about this, we always have to pay our fixed cost. Doesn't matter if I'm operating, doesn't matter if I shut my doors, right? In our shutdown, our loss was just our fixed cost. So I always have to pay these fixed costs. So that is, we can almost just ignore them. We can say they're here no matter what, whether or not I produce anything, shouldn't matter based off my fixed costs. That is what I should be looking at. Am I making enough money to cover my labor cost? Am I making enough money to cover my variable costs? If my revenue per unit is more than my labor cost per unit, oh, well, let's, let's write that down. If my revenue per unit, average revenue price, 
is greater than or equal to my labor cost per unit, my average variable cost. Well, I'm bringing in more money than it's costing me to open the doors. So I should operate at a loss. But if ever, if ever my price is less than my average variable, that is my total revenue would be less than my total variable cost. My revenue per unit is less than my labor cost per unit. That is, I'm not even making enough money to cover the cost of bringing my staff in. Well, in that case there, I should shut down. And so what we have is we have our shutdown condition. Depending on what this relationship is between price, variable cost, ultimately total revenue and total variable cost is going to determine whether or not we should operate at a loss or shut down. So how does this all how does this all kind of come back into our cost diagram? Well, let's take a look at that. Taking a look at our cost diagram, let's take a look at a firm in a perfectly competitive market earning negative profit. So profit equals negative profit. That seemed rather redundant. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, here's our vertical axes, here's our horizontal axes. We have price or dollars per unit as our vertical. We have units as our horizontal. And what we're gonna have starting off, average variable cost dipping down, rising back up. And I'm going to have my average total cost dipping down, rising back up, getting closer, but never touching. I'm then going to have my marginal cost coming through the minimum point of each one. Minimum average variable, minimum average total. Marginal cost. And if we keep in mind our whole profit situation, Profit equals price minus average total cost times Q star. So for negative profit, if we're looking for negative profit, we are looking for price less than average total cost. So, okay, let's, let's draw a line such that that is true. Draw a line here. Price less than average. No, that's too high. Let's try that again. There we go. I could do that a little bit higher even. Let's, uh, let's, let's do that a little bit higher. Okay, so right there, I'm just below my minimum average total cost point, such that this value here of price equals average revenue equals marginal revenue. All right, we could zoom in, we could take a look there. Where our marginal revenue equals our marginal cost, Yellow line equals our red line is just below average total cost, right? So if I drew that blue line over, I would be just earning negative profit. Not much negative profit, but I would be earning negative profit. If I were to draw that down, let's go take a look at that. There would be my value of Q star. There would be my price just up above that guy there that would be my average total cost so i'd be just earning negative profit in this case right price is just less than my average total cost curve i would continue to earn negative profit as my price falls that's uh let's change let's use the same color as i have as my price as this price point drops Right, if we take a look at this, as this price point drops here, oh, all of this begins to go down. Okay, my price drops. This whole bit here, this average total cost. Whoa, I didn't mean to do that. This average total cost line, let's just get rid of that guy there. Uh, it's not even going to be relevant to this new one. Well, it will be, but we'll be in a negative area. As my average total cost drops, well, also, point where marginal revenue equals marginal cost is changing. It's not right at that same point anymore. Where is that now? It's now right there. That's now where I have my intersection. So let's move that guy over. 
And we see that, okay, as this all happens, I can now update that average total cost. So my price has fallen. My Q star has fallen as a result. And this will continue up at Q star. That guy there, that's my average total cost. So you can see that, hey, I have an even larger negative profit now. Even larger negative profit per unit. And price could keep dropping, price could keep dropping, and I would have larger and larger losses, larger and larger negative profit. But, okay, what was our shutdown condition, right? We said that we have this shutdown. We would shut down if price was less than average variable cost. So, okay, we drew our average total cost line across, but where's variable cost line? Well, our average variable cost line, that guy, my Q star. There's my average variable cost. So okay, we see right now price is still bigger than average variable cost. Price above average variable cost still operate. So we'd still be good to operate. But okay, what happens? What happens is price continues to fall. Let's say that price continues to fall, and we have let's get rid of this average cost. My price continues to fall here, down to here. And as price continues to fall, well, as price falls, I'm going to update my Q star. There we go. There's my marginal revenue equals marginal cost right about at that point there. If you're trying to draw this by hand and keep up, please, please don't, right? You could pause it. You could draw three different diagrams. That would be kind of well. Just kind of visualize this, just kind of watch this and see what's happening. Witness that as price is falling, Q star is falling because this intersection point is fine. And price down, Q star down, and we're getting updated readings of our average total, average variable. So that's really our big things that we're trying to demonstrate here. Specifically, that right now as we had this falling price, uh, let's draw that price down there. Right, falling price, there we go. Price fell, I now have at Q star, I now have this average variable cost. So that is even though my profit maximizing condition, marginal revenue equals marginal cost is saying that, okay, you have a Q star here. No, 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 my shutdown condition says, hey, if price is less than average variable cost, very clearly the case, price is less than average variable cost, shut down, drop your Q star all the way down to zero. So all the places we looked it up until this point, we were running negative profit. As soon as we dropped, right? If you want to think about this, as soon as we dropped right below this minimum average variable cost curve, right? As soon as we crossed this point, any horizontal line marginal revenue was going to intersect marginal cost below our average variable cost, meaning that price would be less than average variable. So if we wanted to clean up this diagram, we could add another point to this. Let's clean this up. Let's zoom out all the way to our normal screen. Okay. Let's clean up this diagram. I'm just going to get rid of a lot of this stuff here. We can identify some points. And we remember, we said, hey, this point here, that onwards, what do we call that? Minimum average variable cost onwards. We said that this here was a point where we began to experience diminishing average returns. Well, similarly, this minimum average variable cost point, this here would be our, we think about this as price minimum. A perfectly competitive firm will shut its doors if ever there's a price below that minimum average variable cost. That means at this price minimum, we can think this point right here, right where we began to experience diminishing average return. That there would be our Q star minimum. That is the lowest level of output we would ever produce. What does this mean? How can we do with this? It means that a perfectly competitive firm will never operate with a price down there and will never produce quantity along here. This area of the graph is essentially non-existent. 
we will never operate in that shaded area. That's just a no-go zone for our perfectly confirmed. We will jump from Q star min to zero, but we will not operate in that shaded area. Meaning, if we want to take a look at our profit zones, see right there, that's my, see, did I draw that across okay? Actually, I don't even need to draw that across. Bringing this in here, that there is my average total cost. I could take kind of take a look at the following situations. If, if I get a price, uh, let's use a bit of a more color we can think about for this. If I have a price in this zone, I will look, I will have negative profit and I will operate at a loss. If I have a price less than average total cost, right, less than that minimum average total cost, keep in mind what that point also was. That was also my capacity of the firm. So if I have a price intersecting marginal cost below capacity, well, I'm going to earn negative profit everywhere down here. In the red zone, I will operate at a loss, earning negative profit. In the white zone, I will just shut down. I'll earn negative profit still, but I'll just shut down. What does that leave us? Well, that leaves us up top here. This entire green zone all the way up. Such that if ever I have a price intersecting anywhere up here in this green zone, I'm going to have positive profit. So we can kind of break in wherever we throw in this horizontal line for our price equals average revenue equals marginal revenue. We're going to get the corresponding re readouts. That comes in above our minimum average total cost, above that capacity point, we'll have positive profit. If that price point comes in right at minimum average total cost, well, if it comes in right at minimum, right? Maybe I should write that. This here is our minimum average total cost. If our price point comes in right at minimum average total cost, we'll have zero profit. And then if price point comes in below average total cost, minimum average total cost, we'll have negative profit, but two scenarios of negative profit. The red one there, where we operate at a loss, or the white one, where we still earn a loss, but we just shut down altogether. So our three different profit scenarios identified, positive, zero, and negative, and that little carry forward, that caveat about earning. Hopefully that helps you identify those points. Um, if you're like, hey, Keith, we never actually drew in that line to show our price. Well, let's quickly do that. We can draw that in. Let's operate at a loss. There we go, drawing that in in that red zone. We have price equals average revenue equals marginal revenue. So in that operate at a loss zone, I'll put price in there. What do we have at this point? Well, Q star. Marginal revenue equals marginal cost. That's going to be, uh, not there. That's going to be right there. Right, right here. Q star. Marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So we'll identify that point. There's my Q star. Price. What do I have? Uh, we can zoom in. Given that uh, this wasn't quite a perfect minimum, this wasn't actually quite a perfect curve, just an artifact of freehanding, we actually have our average total cost being intersected right there, unfortunately. I say unfortunately because ideally it would be above that minimum, but again, artifact of freehanding, it's pretty close. So what we have is we have our average total cost at that point as well. Let's just minimum because that technically shouldn't be. And so if we wanted to identify our size of our loss, our size of our negative profit, price minus average total cost is our negative profit. So what do we have here? Price minus average total cost. This is my negative 
average profit, I'm losing that distance per unit. I am producing Q star units. So hey, I have the height of a rectangle, I have the base of a rectangle. I can work out all together what my loss is as base times height, Q star times average negative profit. And I get this rectangle here. And this rectangle here, this would be the rectangle that is identifying my negative profit. So that guy there, that would be the rectangle identifying the size of my negative profit. And of course, if I knew price, if I knew average total cost, if I knew the value of Q star, I could, I could calculate that. Right? If we just were to make up some numbers briefly, we could say, okay, let's suppose that price was five, average total cost was, um, let's say average total cost was seven, and Q star was still something like, say, 10,000 units. What was my profit at this point? Well, Profit, price minus average total cost times Q star, we have here, five minus seven, negative two, times 10,000. Does that give me? That gives me a $20,000 loss. So 20,000 would be my negative profit at that point there. Okay. Well, let's quickly answer. There's that one bit that I had earlier on where I was like, hey, we have all of our points. We're looking at our shutdown condition and we had our price. We had our average total cost. We had our average, sorry, we had our price, average fixed, average variable. And I said, hey, could you figure out what our marginal cost was? Or could you figure out what our marginal revenue was given this? And it was like, oh, oh, can I? Well, yes, yes, you can. Because at that Q star, we said, Price was five, and keep in mind what's price equal to? Price is equal to average revenue, marginal revenue. So okay, if price is five, we know that marginal revenue is. Furthermore, we can say if we're actually producing at Q star, we know that marginal cost equals marginal revenue. So if five equals marginal revenue and marginal revenue equals marginal cost, then our marginal cost must also be five at Q star, right? And that's the big caveat, at Q star. Only at that point there are all of those things one and the same. So big summary of this, big takeaway, being able to identify our profit zones, being able to identify our shutdown condition. And if I uh, say, be able to say, Draw me a perfectly competitive firm, earning positive profit. Identify if this firm is operating above capacity, below capacity, at capacity. Identify if this firm is experiencing diminishing average or diminishing marginal returns. You should be able to work all of that out following this video. That's the expectation here. Uh, our next thing, our next short little bit that we're going to be taking a look at is how we take all of this forward in order to derive our market demand curve. And what all this means as our representative firm that we just demonstrated moves into the long run. So right here, we just took a look at a firm earning negative profit. Hopefully you realize that earning negative profit is not sustainable. So we'll talk about what that means as well.